Antibiotic resistance is a large problem concerning public health. This video is produced in collaboration with this year's iGEM Hamburg team. The iGEM competition was created for international teams to push the boundaries of synthetic biology and tackle everyday issues. The Hamburg team works on a project to facilitate the detection of antibiotic resistance and this video features three of the simplest detection methods. Antibiotics are prescribed to treat or prevent bacterial infections. Antibiotics are used worldwide to eliminate pathogens. A high selective pressure on bacteria promotes the incidence of resistances. Unfortunately, the misuse and overuse of these drugs led to more and more bacteria developing resistance. So that antibiotic resistance quickly became one of the biggest threats to global health. If you are interested in the mechanisms of how antibiotics work, check out the video indicated in the top right corner. One strategy to prevent the emergence of antibiotic resistance is to limit the overall use. In the clinical field, however, the prescription of antibiotics is fundamental to ensure patient well-being and survival. Therefore, an effective strategy is to prescribe and dispense only suitable antibiotics as an individual treatment approach. In order to prescribe the correct antibiotic, it is not only required to identify the pathogen that caused the infection, but because of the high chance of antibiotic resistance already being present in the pathogen, testing for resistance is highly advisable as well. There are multiple tests available to determine antibiotic resistance. I'll hand over to Esther from iGEM Hamburg and she will explain how these simple and straightforward techniques are performed. Most of the techniques to detect antibiotic resistance depend on bacterial growth. One of them is referred to as the disk diffusion method, also known as Kirby-Bauer test. For this method, isolated bacteria from blood, saliva, urine or other body fluids are cultivated on an agar petri dish. The plate is incubated until it is fully covered with bacteria. Now, small paper discs soaked in different kinds of antibiotics are placed directly on the lawn. The disc will evenly release the respective antibiotic during incubation. Around some of these antibiotic patches, a circular zone appears. The drug inhibited growth or eliminated bacteria around the discs. The diameter of these zones can be compared to determine the level of susceptibility. If the bacteria lawn around one disc is not affected, the bacteria is likely resistant to this specific drug. The other discs indicate antibiotic vulnerabilities and intermediate responses indicating low susceptibility or emergent antibiotic resistance. Another method based on the same principle is called E-Test, short for Epsilometer Test. For the E-Test, an agar plate is inoculated with bacteria again until it is fully covered, just like it was shown in the previous method. The difference here with the E-Test, in which test strips are used, additional information is provided. The strips are impregnated with an exponential and continuous antibiotic gradient from a high to low concentration. The strip is also labeled with the respective concentration. Thus, this test is considered quantitative since the MIG can be determined. The MIG, short for minimum inhibitory concentration, indicates how much of an antibiotic is needed to inhibit bacterial growth. The test strip is carefully placed on the agar plate and will immediately release antibiotic to the surface. After an incubation period, it is expected to see a zone around the strip with no bacterial growth. The MIG is determined as the indicated concentration at which the end of the zone and the reading scale coincide. If there is no disruption in the bacteria growth around the strip or the clear area is really small, these bacteria are likely already resistant or a resistance is emerging. Keep in mind, this only applies if the antibiotic used for the test is effective against the respective strain used for the analysis. Did you know that all positive results for antibiotic resistance need to be reported as part of the Global Action Plan on Antimicrobial Resistance by the World Health Organization? There are also a few functional tests available which are especially useful if the resistance gene has not been identified yet. Calorimetric tests are one example. They work via a shift in pH. The test is simple. Bacteria are incubated with the antibiotic and a pH indicator. If the bacterium has an enzyme that hydrolyzes the respective antibiotic, which means inactivating the drug, a hydrogen atom is produced and the pH in the solution changes. The pH change is visible as a change of color. I hope this video was helpful to you. 
make sure to subscribe to Henrik's channel if you have not done this before and like the video. It will help a lot. And don't forget to check out your local iGym groups. And I hope to see you soon.